This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on awesomesharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and see that how we can edit or update a reminder by adding a different list to it or by adding notes to it, reminder date, reminder time, and things like that. For that, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a brand new Swift UI view. I will call it reminder detail view. Okay, there we go. So the reminder detail view will be displayed from the reminder list screen and it will allow us to, well, see the detail, meaning it will allow us to edit or update a reminder. In order for the reminder detail view to work, we need a couple of different things. We need to pass in a reminder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say binding var reminder. Now, in case you're wondering that why am I using the binding over here? The reason that we're using binding is that, so whenever we pass in a reminder from the previous screen, and we change some of the properties of the reminder, it will automatically get updated. Now, there will be a couple of properties that we will change using the binding, but the rest of them we will use the technique which will be using the editor config part. So I'll show you in a moment that what the editor config actually looks like. You can already see over here in the Xcode preview is complaining that you need to pass in a reminder. So let's go ahead and pass in a reminder. We can simply pass in a constant reminder from the preview data. So we'll say preview data dot reminder. And make sure that you are passing the environment object. Uh, well, right now, environment scheme, if you want. I guess environment object is not really needed in this case. So that should be okay. We're not really accessing core data over here. So actually, you don't really have to pass in anything over here. Next up, we need to create some sort of a user interface. I'm oh, going to start with a navigation view. And inside the navigation view, I'm going to add a vStack. And now inside the vStack, it's up to you how you create your interface. I'm just going to use a very simple list with some sections. And you'll see that when you use a list with section, it will create a nice, simple display. We need a text field to show you the title of a particular uh, reminder so text and what should be put over here well we can use reminder.title but instead of that 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create and something called edit config. Now we don't really have any edit config over here, so this is not really going to work. So let's go ahead and create the edit config. And we'll talk about that why are we creating it? What is the responsibility of edit config? Okay, so let's talk about edit configs. I'm gonna go inside my models and create a brand new folder and we will call it edit configs. Or you can even call it configs, I guess, if you want to. The main idea of creating the edit config file is that so this particular file will be a struct that can capture all the things that you're writing in the text box. And using this edit config, we can then update our reminder. So instead of adding multiple fields over here for one for the title, one for the reminder date and the list and the time and the notes, we are going to just add an edit config a very simple struct that is going to allow us to capture all of those different things. Now, this is what the edit config kind of looks like. It has a title, notes, is completed, has time, has date, reminder date, reminder time, and you can create edit config by also passing in a reminder so that when you pass in a reminder to an edit config, it's going to pre populate it with all the stuff in there. Okay, so let's go back. And when we go back to our reminder detail screen, this is where we can create an edit config. So let me go ahead and create an edit config. Great. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to initialize our edit config, meaning this edit config will have all the information from the reminder. So I can use the on appear and then edit config and then initialize it again. I can say edit config reminder and then simply pass in the reminder. So this basically means that the edit config struct that we just created will contain all of the properties, the values, everything from the reminder because that is what we're passing. And that will give us a little bit more separation because now we can write some code that is going to be adding something to the edit config instead of directly to the reminder. So now you can see that whatever you're passing in to the edit config, because we call the reminder over here, it is simply being passed. And when, whenever you type something in the text boxes or you make any selection, that is also going to be giving you uh, the information that's going to be putting it into the edit config. Now let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Uh, to the argument type this, okay. Okay, let's see. So over here, we can see over, over here, it's saying notes, uh, when we, when the edit config dot notes, and we are kind of like trying to unwrap it. So that's why it is complaining over here. So we need to see what exactly is going on, and we need to fix this part. So the problem that we're facing over here is that we are using this uh, double question mark, null call sec operator. And right now we're just sending a string. So this is not allowed. You can't really just send a string over here. So what we need to do is we need to create some sort of a custom operator that is going to allow us to give us a different meaning when we are dealing with bindings. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new folder and I will call it utils. And inside the utils, going to add a new file. We can call it custom operators if you want to. So custom operators. And we only have one custom operator. So we're just going to copy paste that part. And this custom operator is going to be a custom operator for the null call sec operator, which is right here, double question mark. And basically what it's saying is that when the left-hand side is optional of T and the right-hand side is just a type, and it's going to return you binding of T. Binding of T simply means that whatever the type is, it's going to return you the binding for that. All right, so now we can actually start using this and you'll see that hopefully the error is going to go away. See that? So 
if it this one is optional, then we are going to, not null, just optional, then we're going to unwrap it. And this is done by this custom operator that we just wrote, which is this one. If, however, it is null, then this string is going to convert into binding of string, which is also fine. Okay. Now we're going to use the same exact logic over here. We're going to create another section. And this time, the section we're going to create is going to allow us for the toggle button. So let's go ahead and add a toggle button. There we go. Let's go ahead and refresh our UI, Xcode preview, so we can see. Okay, it looks pretty nice. You can see that we have a toggle over here. These accordions or arrows, we can probably hide them by saying, by applying some sort of a different style. So let's go to the list over here and we will say list style and this will be inset grouped. So they will go away. Okay, much nicer. Okay, now based on your selection of has date, if the person has date, meaning if this particular reminder you're saying it has date, then and only then we will display you a date picker. So we will add a if check over here, that's gonna check for that. Let's go ahead and see if it works. Okay, looks pretty good. See that? Only if this has date or the calendar is selected, then we can display the date. Awesome. The same exact thing we are going to do with the time. So here's the time. It's going to display the clock. And when it is checked, we want to display the time and only the hour and minute. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, hour and minute. And this hour and minute is because the displayed components for the date picker is set to hour and minute. And when we were displaying the date, it was set to just the date itself. So this looks pretty good. The other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that on the top, on the very top, right over here, we should say details. All right, so this means that we need to create a toolbar that is going to give us those that information. So let me go ahead and add a toolbar. And in the toolbar, we can say toolbar item. And now we're talking about the placement of that item. Uh, let me go ahead and write it again because sometimes it doesn't come up. There we go. And the placement will be principal. Principal simply means that it's going to be in the center principal and the content will be simply text and it will simply say details. So hopefully we'll be able to see the details. That is great. And we will have a cancel button and we will have a done button. So let's go ahead and add a another toolbar item, toolbar item with the placement. And we will say trailing. You can see that my Xcode is kind of dying over here. It's not really allowing me to complete whatever I'm typing. So that's okay. We will probably have to restart it. But there we go. We have our button, done button. And the same thing can go for the dismiss button. So let's go ahead and add another button, which is dismiss or cancel. And for the dismiss action, we can always take help from the environment. Just add a environment over here. So that function, if you call that, it is going to dismiss it. Okay, so it looks pretty good. One other thing that we still need to add is that when you are updating your reminder, yes, you can type in the new notes and you can go ahead and select a particular date and you can select a particular time, but you also should be able to move the list. Maybe I added this particular reminder in the wrong list so I would have some sort of an option right here that I can move a reminder from a green list to a purple list or a blue list to a gray list. So how can I do that? That will require a little bit of work. So let's go ahead and in the next video, we're going to learn about that how we can allow the user to also change their list.